I don't know how many times we gotta say this, but friends, don't answer the door with a gun in your hand. Hi everyone, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from scenic Menifee, California. How do you know Menifee is scenic? It's not. <laughs> Dark Star Gear is one of the few companies that I trust to make holsters that I wear. They make high quality appendix carry holsters for a variety of firearms manufacturers. Check them out at the link in the description. 911 call came in about in this complex about the guy that's in this apartment has was outside screaming and hollering and banging on the door to be let in. So they figured out where it was and now they're responding to figure out what was going on and why there was trouble. The guy's gonna come to the door. We do have badge cam audio here, so let's listen in. Uh, hey, dude, put that, put that back, dude. Hey, dude, come out. Shots fired off for himself. Shots fired off for himself. What you got, buddy? I got two lines up. Hey, come out with your hands up, man. Let's see your head. Come out. Come out with your hands up. I got two lines. Hey, dude, turn around. Turn, turn around. around. Come down there. Go down on your knees. Down on your knees. Down, you. put your hands on your head. Hands on your head. Lay down flat. Flat on the ground. Flat on the ground. You got me? Yeah. I'm going to last. Listen. All right. Are you hit? No. I'm scared, bro. Put your other hand behind your back. Is there anybody else in the house? No. Hi, how you doing? Hey, dude, put that, put that back. Is that a gun, Bobby? You want to do it? You want to do it? I got four on the top. What you got, Bobby? I got Slowed down from the first officer's perspective, you can see the guy show up in the door, there's a gun in his hand, he puts his hand behind his back and the officer starts to draw his gun and then he makes a, a motion like he's gonna bring the gun up. Well, he actually dropped the gun at his feet, you can see that there, and then brought his hand up like, oh, I'm okay. And uh, thankfully, the officer missed in this case, but boy, are we gonna talk about whether that was a good thing. Hey, listen, cops, and private citizens, if you want free training, go over to the second channel, Active Self Protection Extra. Literally nine lessons a week to help you get better as a self-defender in your skill set. And it's free. All right, we've got to get it out of the way, Mike, that I know people are going to say he has every right to come to his own door sure, sure. with a gun. Now, let's just say if we go read the news stories that it is an unregistered, privately manufactured firearm. I'm all about privately manufactured firearms, but in California, it's a felony to have one that's not registered, and so this guy is not real smart to be doing that and answering the door with that gun. And listen, if you uh, come to the door and, and you know you don't know who's on the other side, why would you open the door regardless? And just challenge through the door. There's a million options here. And by the way, privately manufactured firearms, PMFs, you heard it here first. That's a thing now. We don't call them ghost guns anymore. Anyway, this guy comes to the door, um, isn't sure who it is. Now, people will say, and they'd be right to say, well, this officer we're seeing on the badge cam is probably not visible through the people. He's they, not, neither, for sure. And that's a tactic of the police. You don't stand in front of the door for very obvious reasons. Somebody could, could hit you with buckshot through the door. That's a problem. So what are his options? Challenge through the door, like you said. Um, if you don't believe it's the cops, if you're, you think someone's out to get you, hey, call 911. It's not, it's okay to call 911 for this. Call 911 and say, I'm in 123 Main Street, Apartment 4. There's people here saying they're in law enforcement. Can you verify that? And they'll be like, yeah, they're there to talk to you. Open the door. That's all you got to do. That's it. You can avoid all this stuff. And is, is it his right to come to the door with a gun in his hand? Of course it's his right. But, you know, as Chris Rock once said, just because you can do it doesn't mean it's to be done. It's just doesn't not a good idea. Done. Yeah, and, and listen, at the very least, have that that gun hidden behind the door. Don't show up and just show the gun in your in your hand like that. Or if you're going to do that, this is why something like a Filster Enigma is a good thing. You want to have the gun on your person, concealed, whatever, and you feel like you want to open the door, okay, fine, but don't have it in your hand like this and certainly don't come out the door like that because I even if this is bad guys and not cops, you don't want to open the door to begin with. So this is bad tactics on the private citizen's part. Now, from the officer's perspective, as he opens the door, this is what he sees. He sees a guy with a gun in his hand. 
while he is investigating a disturbance at the apartment complex. Now, what is that putting together for this officer? I am in danger for my life. And so the officer is going to draw his firearm here. And, and listen, officers, hear me. You need to be fast and accurate. And, and I really think in this particular case, given all that, that gun out and on that guy at the very least, as you continue to assess, needs to be way faster than what we saw here. We talk a lot in the space, John, about standing and delivering when you're shooting. What does that mean? It means um, try not to flinch too much. Try not to make any crazy movements. Now, this officer, in his defense, he has a concrete staircase as his right behind him. And he probably at this moment doesn't know how far that staircase is and doesn't sure. want to fall down it. I'm sure at least subconsciously that's part of what he's thinking here. So, at, but at this distance, uh, not a criticism, but there's no reason you don't make this shot. Of course, we're super happy he didn't connect with this yeah, shot. Yeah, because, you know, obviously. That would have been a tragedy. Right. But the fact is, at this distance, these shots should be made. This is point shooting, really. At, 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 what is this, maybe three yards, five yards yeah, tops? five tops. Um, with, with that said, this is what he's presented with. So right now he has to make a quick decision. What am I gonna do? This guy clearly has some kind of gun in his hand. Uh, I think drawing and challenging would be a good idea. He didn't really have time. The guy moved kind of fast. He dropped it really fast. I don't blame this officer for not seeing that he dropped it because the motion he makes a moment later it looks Certainly very, looks like he's going to very you know, much, shoot. Yeah, like he's yeah. like he's bringing that gun up to bear, and so he made a really really fast split second decision. This is what we ask of our law enforcement on a daily basis. There's millions of contacts a day between law enforcement and the public, and the vast majority of them go well. Uh, but these officers are, are at, we ask them for us, hey, go deal with the situation. Now listen, and I also want you to see, watch what happens here. We've slowed it down so you can see how this guy's hand reacts. So he, he's gonna put the gun back behind like, he, oh shoot, I didn't mean to show you my gun. And then he's gonna drop it right where we're gonna see it in a minute, but then he brings his hand up and that motion looks every bit like he's pulling that gun up in order to do that. Now, the reason that you wanna hit this shot, officers, and not miss this shot is what's behind this guy. These are apartments, mm -hmm. these are made out of cardboard, basically, and that bullet is gonna go through six, eight, nine interior walls. And, and you're responsible for it until it comes to rest. And the only good place for it is in a deadly threat. And, and listen, again, I think it was fortunate that the officer missed in this case and no one was hurt, but boy, was it dangerous. Absolutely. You know, I, I know we're going to get comments. We're going to get letters, John, uh, about this. I, I think everyone here had the best intentions. I think this guy didn't make a great decision by coming to the door with a gun, but I think maybe he thought, well, maybe there's a threat. I don't know who this is. I'm going to have a gun with me, yada, yada. Um, and, and as soon as he recognized, hey, there's a uniform cops, he, he drops it. It's, it's how he dropped it. Yeah. It was rather furtive. Like may, He's thinking, man, maybe they didn't see it yet, and I'm going to get rid of it because I don't want to take a charge for this, this uh, PMF or whatever. Um, so uh, I'm not mad at this resident. I'm mad, not mad at these cops. It's kind of a comedy of errors. Yeah, and, and you can see right here that the guy dropped the gun, and the officer was able to see the gun mm -hmm. in the stairwell. Oh, or, I'm sorry, in the doorway, rather, from the stairwell. And so he stops. He stopped shooting at the guy. And, and I think that that is commendable. It tells me that the officer is mentally present in the moment to see what is going on, and he's doing a good job of that. Of course, that leads this to be a total soup sandwich in terms of how am I going to get this guy out of here and those things and and frankly as, as we watched this i was like i don't know that there's a good way to make that happen i think it's just pick your yuck yeah it's it's a you know that there's a i hate the term fatal funnel but it you know kind of applies here to that open door i would have liked to see them get him on preferably move him further away from where this officer's vantage point is down to where there's wall and there's not a door there i know the door closed automatically on its own it has one of those automatic closers on it I would have liked to have seen them get him out all the way, show me your hands, keep them all the way up, walk four steps that way, stop, get down, prone out. Yeah. That way they're not worried about someone else popping out of that door. Yeah. Now, you know, it is interesting here. Why did we see the miss? Well, because the officer sees what he sees, and when his shot breaks, you can see that he's flinching hard. And he's he's kind of stuck in a no man's land, because you're exactly right. He can't back up here because he's going to fall down the steps. But he wants to get away from where this guy can maybe hurt him, so yes. he wants to move over. I really think here, here, here's a potential for this, is to take a mental rep when you're standing at the door and go, okay, if he comes to the door before with a gun, yeah. 
Yeah. Before you knock, okay? I know I can get my gun out quickly, and you know that because you've done your dry practice, you, you've you know done the work, and you know that that's there. So if you do a mental rep, when you see it, you respond appropriately, because otherwise you miss and you do endanger folks. Now, let's think about the, the officer whose badge cam that we're looking at here. He's kind of in a bad spot too, and mm -hmm. he is going to back way the heck out of there to try to get down the stairs, because <clears throat> this is the problem with an apartment complex, right? There's just nowhere good to go. No, there, there really isn't. <laughs> Let me address this, what we're seeing right here, John. This officer is sort of flinching. Not a criticism. This is human nature. If you had, a, you thought someone's about to shoot you, you would flinch. This is just something you have to train and train and train out of yourself. This natural instinct to, to flinch, to crouch, to you know have a kind of a goofy, non, not very good shooting position like he has right here. I'm sure these are fine officers, but this is something that needs to be trained out of you to the point where you're going to, in as many circumstances as it's practicable, you're going to stand and deliver those shots as needed. And again, fortunately, he missed. And and we see officers do the, the right thing all the time. And and I train with a lot of cops, and so do you, obviously you do too. And, and you know, we see those guys that, that really do get down on the training range, and when they get out there in the real world, guess what? They do what they've been trained to do. Absolutely. And, and so that's my thing to you officers. Please go above and be on your department training, get out there into your own classes. Uh, there's plenty of times where you can get those at reduced costs or even have your department pay for them to help you in this you know, worst case of your life. Now, the, the officer here gets out into a spot and then all of a sudden he has a pistol mounted light rave here where he's trying to figure out on strobe, on strobe, on, off, on. And, and you know, you said this on an earlier video, Mike, that that the actuation of a pistol mounted light is not an intuitive process. Nope. So you gotta practice it. And also, friends, I would argue that I don't like pistol-mounted lights with strobe functions. I don't think the strobe function is very useful. It should be on or off, on Our or off. Strobe function is fantastic on a handheld light for certain situations for disorienting people. You get somebody in, in the real dark, you just give them a quick with that uh, strobe light going on and they're they're blinking and trying to get their bearings for the next 30 seconds. So that's great. I agree, on the gun, it's, it's a terrible idea. There's never a good time. If you're if you're aiming a firearm at someone, you don't want a strobe light going in that moment. No, that's because it's going to mess with you too, right? Yeah. So it's not a time for a light rave in that moment. And all things considered, they got this guy into custody. I think they treated him pretty respectfully afterwards, and kudos to them for that. Thankfully, this guy wasn't hurt. Let's make sure that we do a good job. I think God covered everyone's ass that day. <laughs>